In this episode, we ask the question, how do astronomers see the invisible parts of the universe? Hey, Josh Bernstein here. I'm at the Great Refractor Telescope, which, check it out, it's pretty amazing. It was installed here in 1847, and for decades, this was the largest telescope in the United States and one of the finest in the world. Truly incredible technology. There's just one problem with it, and that it sees only the visible spectrum of light. What I want to know is, what if we could see into the invisible spectrum? That's what I've come here to find out. I've come to the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I've arranged to meet Dr. Jonathan McDowell to learn about the Chandra X-ray Telescope at its command center. So Josh, welcome to the Chandra Mission Control Center. Uh, and here is Craig, our operations controller, and Steve, our command controller. Uh, and they are actually talking to the spacecraft. Okay. Why an X-ray telescope? What is it that we're not seeing with the telescopes that we already, already had? If you imagine that you were wandering around the world and you could only see things colored green, and you couldn't see anything that was any other color, mm -hmm. um, that's sort of what astronomers were like before we had X-ray telescopes and infrared telescopes. And what we see with X-ray telescopes that you can't see with ordinary light, like the Hubble, are exploding stars, black holes, anything that's really hot, like a million degrees, mm -hmm. or really extreme, uh, like a supernova explosion, uh, enormous clouds of hot gas in space, matter falling into a black hole. Because when something gets even hotter than bright white hot, it goes into a spectrum that the naked eye can't see? Exactly. So, you know, you okay. heat something up and it starts red hot, blue hot, white hot, yeah. but then it goes ultraviolet hot and x-ray hot. Okay. And so if you have something okay. that is x-ray hot, yeah. right, it, if we had a globe of fire that was x-ray hot, it would yeah. be totally transparent. You'd see right through it. But if you yeah. put your x-ray specs on, you suddenly see... Boom. Boom, really bright thing blinding you. Okay. And, I had no idea. So, Do uh, people say x-ray hot? Is that a term that... Nah, I made that up. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. okay. Well, that's cool, though. So, okay, so, so red hot, blue hot, white hot, x-ray hot. Exactly. Okay, and to see the x-ray hot qualities in the universe, we need an x-ray telescope. Exactly right. X-rays were first observed in 1895 by German physicist Wilhelm Röntgen, who produced X-rays and photographed the bones in his wife's hand, wedding ring and all. Since then, X-rays have become indispensable to the medical community. In space, dramatic events like star explosions also produce X-rays. Viewing them, however, is not so easy. So scientists needed to design a solution. To actually see X-rays from space, made not from a lamp, but from a star or a black hole, uh, there's a problem. Uh, the X-rays come to us from across the universe and they spend maybe a hundred million years in some cases mm -hmm. crossing the universe to get to us and then they get stopped in the last second as the X-rays hit the Earth's atmosphere. They can't, so X-rays can't penetrate our atmosphere? Our mm -hmm. atmosphere protects us from X-rays from space. It's, it's okay. too thick for it to Which get through. Which is, I'm guessing, good for us. Absolutely. Right. I mean, it's right. really annoying for X-ray astronomers, right. but, but as yeah. human right. beings, it's actually kind yeah. of a good thing. Okay. So, so, so when did scientists recognize that these X-rays coming across the galaxies existed, but weren't able to get to us? Jonathan explains that astronomers realized in the 1940s that our sun produced X-rays. It wasn't until 1962, though, that Italian-American physicist Riccardo Giacconi captured deep space X-ray images, effectively launching the dawn of X-ray astronomy. The Chandra X-ray telescope is the latest effort to capture X-ray images in space. What do you see in the X-ray spectrum that you don't see in the visible spectrum? You'd, You'd see more. things that you would never notice. Yeah. So you look, oh yeah, it's just boring stars. I mean, stars to me are not boring, but, but, but lots <laughs> of stars. Right. And, and you look at it with Chandra, and you see this enormous big cloud of, of hot gas from an exploded star yeah. that you wouldn't see at all with, with, uh, uh, with an ordinary telescope. So yeah, right. you get a completely different view of what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, you miss uh, all the energetic stuff because it's too hot, right? Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you heated it up to a million degrees and that's and that's the stuff you want to look at right because that's the uh, where the really dramatic uh, things are happening yeah and it's gone transparent so you need the x-ray telescope to see it once every eight hours mission control has a chance to connect with chandra download its data and upload new instructions this uh, is roger copy five four you go command roger 
Once that raw data come in, scientists use computer models to analyze and convert the data into pictures. And those pictures are spectacular. You get a whole new view on the universe. Suppose you, you look at a piece of the sky and you see a lot of stars there, right? Mm -hmm. Turns out one of those stars is not a star. It's actually much more distant. It's a thing called a quasar, which is a black hole eating stars for lunch. And, okay. and it's uh, billions of times brighter, but it's much further away. Yeah. You take a Chandra image, the normal stars kind of go away. You don't see them much. Mm -hmm. And the quasar is Boom. booming out at you. Wow. It's, it's shining bright. How many telescopes do we have that are like Chandra? Or are there, are there ways to improve upon the technology at this point? Absolutely, but there's, there's nothing to beat Chandra. Nothing else can take light as sharply, as, as take images as sharply as Chandra can. Black holes, supernovas, quasars are all made visible thanks to the Chandra X-ray telescope. For over 15 years, it has exceeded NASA's expectations and delighted astronomers around the world. And it shows no signs of stopping. It's beyond mission accomplished. It's, it's really one of the stars of NASA's uh, uh, science program, and, and we're very proud of it. Regarding our question, how do astronomers see the invisible parts of the universe? Thanks to the Chandra telescope, astronomers can view X-ray emissions deep in space, gaining profound insights into the most dramatic events that have shaped and will continue to shape our universe.